Welcome to Irie AT, Braille and Low Vision. Hi, thanks for joining us in the Irie AT Product Review Center. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Cloverbook Plus. It's another great magnifier from Sightcare, another of the Cloverbook series. Or if you're thinking about getting something like this, or you have one and you want to just learn better how to use it, this video is hopefully going to be helpful to you. Let's take a deep dive into the Cloverbook Plus from Sightcare. All right, so let's start out and just kind of see what we get in the box. So first of all, we have the magnifier itself, of course. You bring this over and you can see some of the other things that come. You get a, uh, a power charger. It's nice because it has this tip on it, a uh, round tip, so you can't put it in the wrong way. I'll tell you more about that in a moment. Get a shoulder strap for the case that'll connect on either side. Also have a suitcase handle on the case. And then the case itself, real handy. Let me get that out of the way. I can hold down the Cloverbook Plus here. And there's a indentation in the back of the case here. And there's the shape to fit the device. So it just fits right snug in there. And close it up and take it with you. So let's look at some of the physical features of the Cloverbook Plus. First, we just have a handle on it, right? As we open up the case, we just lift it right out of here, real easy. Well, again, we got 5.3 pounds. It's a nice compact design on this. To open it up, I'm gonna use that same handle I, I used to get it out of the case. Just put a finger or two, I can just put one finger on the tray and just lift that up, get it to the angle that I want. We'll kind of start looking at some of the physical features of this. We've got, first of all, like I mentioned, 5.3 pounds, real light, easy to use. You can move this in any number of positions, depending on the reading material you're, you're using, or if you're a different position, if you're standing up doing a cooking or, you know, whatever you might do doing standing up, um, you can just move this around. It's nice because it moves easily, but it stays. So it's not just flopping down on you. Um, great for thicker books, Bibles, great for writing. It's a great angle because you're looking through the cameras here and then you're, you're on the deck. So, or the tray or whatever you want to call this. So nice design to this, a lot of different ways you can use it. Oh, a couple other things I'll show you just on the outside of the device. We've got a removable battery. Uh, how helpful is that not to have to replace your device because the battery goes on you. You can get additional batteries. You can get a, uh, uh, an outside charger so you can charge them separately and just always have one ready to go. Uh, of course, it does have pass-through charging, so it'll work uh, as you're charging it. Uh, now, I've got the lights on there too, camera, speaker, and that is the bottom of the device. What you've got here is you've got a 12 and a half inch full HD screen. You've got a 4K camera, so it's going to give you a great image on there. And this is, um, you know, basically like a, a screen that is hinged at the top to two arms that reach up from the tray and hold it. And we'll just go around and explore the device a little bit. On the left arm, the top, we have the power button. That'll light up when you turn it on. You can feel it, it's a little bit tactile. And it's nice, right under that is where you plug in the power. So again, we have a round plug. It's gonna plug in there. It's not going to wreck the port. Uh, it's one of the main things that we see that go wrong that when, when they come in for repair. Someone used one that maybe has to, has to go in a certain way, push too hard, wreck the port. Um, with this, you're not going to have those issues. It's real easy to find and intuitive that the power button and the power plug-in are right in the same place. I'm just going to go around quickly and familiarize you with the, the other things on the outside of the device, and then we'll get it, it kicked on and, and show you how it works. Uh, so I'm going to start uh, from that left arm where the power button is and work down to where the screen and the controls or the majority of the controls are. On the left side of the screen, you're uh, coming from the arm down. You're going to find a USB service port. Don't worry about that. You don't need to use that. That's, that's for us. Um, just below that, though, you've got a larger 
um, indentation in there. And that's where you're going to put an SD card. If you want to put images onto the device or retrieve images that you've taken from the device, uh, maybe you have a recipe you want to put on or take off or, you know, what, what have you, uh, you can do that with this SD card and expand your storage and, and make it portable. Uh, there's a, a rectangular white button just below that. That's going to be your camera switch button. That's going to switch you between your close camera right here under the screen and the uh, camera. Actually, I'll, I'll show you the other camera in just a moment when I get to that side of the device. Then right on the left corner, you've got a blue button. That's your lines and blinds button. I'll turn it around so we can take a look at the front. Now, starting from the left hand side, there's a control panel just underneath the screen. And on the left side, you're going to find the home button. Uh, and then next to that, uh, going to the right, you'll find the contrast knob and button. Then we have the panning wheel, uh, sorry, panning joystick that's in the center. And then we have our zoom wheel to the right of that. And our enter button is the final button there on the front of the control panel. And then there is a microphone uh, that is used for voice labeling when you're saving files and you want to just find them by voice. I'm going to turn the device around so we're seeing the right side of the screen. Uh, there's a few more buttons there. Right on the corner, we've got a, uh, um, what's it? it's one of those buttons. So right on the corner, we've got a, our freeze button and our save button. We're going to press that short press to freeze. We're going to long press it to save files. Then there is a rectangular, um, white rectangular button. Uh, it says AFL on it. That's our autofocus lock. We're going to press that one. We want to make sure that we're focusing down on the reading material. Say we're writing, we don't want it to focus on our hands, so we'd, we'll use that button. Uh, and then we have some, uh, some oval buttons, kind of shape of pills. There's uh, the one closest to, to the, the bottom corner. That one's the minus, and then we have the plus just above that. That's for your volume controls for the speaking menus. Um, then just above those, closest to the right hand arm, is your, there's an indentation, you'll feel a circular indentation, and that's for your headphones, so you can listen to the voice commands and those things, and, and have those uh, privately. Then we have the distance camera. This is one of the greatest things about this particular device, is it has a distance camera. And move that a little bit closer to the camera and hopefully give you a better view of that. This is very cool. First of all, it just folds right out of here. So boom, I've got a camera. Not to, don't have to plug it in, charge it separately, do anything. It's just going to run straight from the power. I take up your Wi-Fi, anything like that. Uh, you obviously have the ability, as I'm flipping it in and out, it's sort of like an antenna comes out of here, uh, to look at any number of different angles as it swings out. Uh, you also can bend the, the thing. Let me turn it a little bit so that's a little more obvious. You can bend it all over so you can move at different angles. And then you can twist the top of it. So that's gonna, gonna bring it around. Let me bring it down right by the camera. Twist that around and you can really um, really look all over. So you, you really can see wherever you want to look, this is going to adapt to to that for you. A very cool deal. It even does when you turn it back on yourself, it will automatically turn into mirror mode. That's a brief overview. Uh, why don't we why don't we turn this on and let's take a look at what it can do. All right, to turn it on, I'm going to press on the left hand uh, top of the arm. There's a power button that's going to turn green when I turn it on. And there we go. The LED lights underneath it come on and it makes a happy I'm on sound. Always like a little welcome. Woohoo! So here we go. Um, put some reading material on there. Right away, we can tell it does what a magnifier should do. It gives us a really nice picture. Uh, we've got a 4K camera on under here, uh, full HD screen. You got a matte screen, so it's going to cut down on your reflections and you just have a nice clear magnifier. You want to make it big, you turn a wheel, or you can use touchscreen. It's very cool how you can adapt however you want to use it. There's a, there's a way to use it. Sometimes you, you want your hands out of the way, you want to use that. And, you know, sometimes you want to kind of move around and pinch and zoom and move at the same time. Well, then you, you use the touchscreen for that. It gives you that option. 
So right off the bat, we've got something that's just a good, nice, clear image, which obviously is our expectation of a, of a nice professional magnifier. But next up, obviously you're going to want your magnifier to have contrast. I'm going to want to have color like this. I'm going to have photos. There are things I'm going to want to see in color, but I also want to see some contrast. Oh yeah, not for the picture. That's not going to help me there. But here we go. Now I can see everything I'm reading. A nice crisp black on white. I don't have, or sorry, white on black in this case. I don't have this nice gray on darker gray uh, kind of thing going on. I've got nice clear things that I can read. So obviously you want your contrast. I like this wheel. I like you can go back and forth. Oh, I missed the one I wanted. Well, I can just flip back to it. Um, that's convenient. And really you don't even need that because it's got a button right in the middle. So if I want to see a photograph, I'm reading along. Okay. And, oh, and there's a photograph here. All I have to do is press in the center of that wheel and it's going to switch to color for me. So now I've got color. I'm looking at my photograph. I want to switch back. Just again, press that button, you switch back. That's all you need to do. So, you know, I don't know many people that they're like, oh, I really, sometimes I want to read in a white on black. Sometimes I want to have yellows. No, you're going to choose one of these. You're going to like it. And that's the one you're going to use. I, at least that's been my experience. So it's just convenient. You don't really have to do anything after that point. Okay, I've got the one I like. So from that point, all I got to do is do that to switch to color, press a button, I'm golden. So again, you want a magnifier to just do the basic things well. This does it very well and makes it really convenient. If you ever get annoyed by something, there's ways to change it. You know, say, are you still, I don't want all these colors, too many colors, yuck, yuck, yuck. So I'm gonna hold down that button right in the middle of the contrast wheel. Customized color combination. Hear that nice voice menu, another really neat convenient thing to this. You can turn that off if it annoys you, but considering how many um, totally blind people are assessing nowadays and, and that kind of thing, you, you gotta make sure this is, is, is accessible in as many ways as possible. So it's very nice, it will talk to you. Now, if you want to turn on and off colors, I long pressed the, uh, the, the button in the center of the contrast wheel. All I have to do, the ones with slashes are the ones that are not going to show. If I want them to show, I press them and the slash goes out. Now that color is going to show up. If I want, uh, let's say I don't want black on green, boom, that's gone. I just put a slash on it. If I want it back. I touch it again. It comes back. So this is part of the deeper menu, but you can just jump to it just using that contrast wheel. And anytime you want to go back from something, it's always really easy. You just hold down the, the hold down the home button, uh, like I just did for a second or two, and it jumps back to live magnification wherever you are. So let's see what else it can do. Now you've got uh, you've got contrast, you've got uh, magnification, you've got a great, nice, clear image. So what is this thing going to do that's that's extra special, unique? Besides just the design and you know the removable battery and all those things, you also have something we call live panning. We're going to just press this joystick in the middle, and any direction that I want to go with it, it's going to show me the entirety that the camera can see. So when I zoom in and things get cut out, well, they're not really cut out. The camera can see them. So I can move and I can see those things. And then if I want to do it differently, I want to do it with my finger. Well, I can do it with the touch screen too. No problem at all. I can move all around panning. And now I'm not frozen. This is still a live view, but I can still move around and do all that stuff. I can, when I, I'm going to press Please the... Image. The freeze, and now I can do the same. There's a few other ones that will do. Okay, now it won't do it for me. So. Oh, yeah, I have to actually zoom in on it. Live image. All right, so I'm going to freeze it. Freeze image. And then, you know, and the zoom in. And so, you know, some of them will do this where you can you can look through a, a frozen image but there's live image. very few that will allow you in a live image to just pan around, especially by touchscreen. That's very, very cool. So panning feature, another neat aspect of the Cloverbook Plus. So let's take a look at the distance camera. In order to use it, like I showed earlier, I'm just going to pop it out of the back here. And hopefully that's actually going to be in the frame. I'll turn it around. 
point it at what I want to point it at. And now I'm just going to press this, this white rectangular button on the left side of the screen near the corner, but not quite, not quite on the corner. I'm going distance to press that. View. I'll press that and then I get my distance view. Now, just like I promised, I can move this around. I can you know, tweak it however I want. Those beautiful kids are my kitty kids. And sorry, I can't very, get very far away in here, but you can see, you know, even, you know, just a few feet away, then I can get down and see their, you know, what's on their teeth and stuff. So it's got a really, really nice camera. It just looks like a little antenna. Uh, it's so cute, but it really, it really does a good job. So I want to switch between that and the, um, and the other view. Oh, there we go. So there's some very cool other things that you can do with this camera and I'm, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna create actually a, a whole nother section to do this later because um, this can flip over can use it for writing on the desk a lot of people are using it now for playing card games or you put your cards out there and you can flip between okay Distance now I can view. see you know actually just similar to this I can put things at a even a pretty close distance and I can zoom in on those it's not just for classrooms and and kind of what we've used traditionally is the distance cameras for um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do a whole section about that we'll we'll get back to this little distance camera my buddy so let's see what else we can do with this first of all just to go through all the buttons and make sure you know what all the different functions do or I was kind of jumping around in sections before we've got the power button on the left top of the arm I'm gonna short press my battery Sorry, I'm going to short press that and not talk at the same time it's talking. High battery. All right, so it said high battery. Shows you down on the left-hand corner, gives you a little icon, shows you... High battery. Shows you the battery level so you know when you need to charge it or not. Otherwise, I can long press on this power button and it gives me two options. It's going to say sleep or uh, shut down. I don't want to shut down right now, so I'll just hit sleep. And then it just goes to sleep gives you a little yellow indicator there. It's yellow. Um, I'm sleeping. You just tap it and you're back to life. And you've got your magnifier again. We showed you the camera switch button. That's the one, the first one coming down uh, from the power button. And getting to the corner, well, let's say I want to read along in this and I want to have a reading line to guide me. I'm going to press the blue button. Line mask on. Press the blue button in the left hand corner. And that's going to bring up my horizontal line button. And I can hold down that button and move the joystick if I want to move the placement of the, butt of the line or the thickness of the line. I can do all those things. I press it again. Also can change the location of this line and, and all that. I've got a vertical line up there now. I can move that around if I want. And then also if I just want to block stuff out completely, I can do it with the blinds feature and then just um, and change the size of that. And I can have that vertical as well. Line so mask off. That's what the blue button does in the corner. Then we've got the home button, the first button to the left and the bottom or the front of the control panel. Come up, it's got some light controls on here, so. All lights off. Turn all the lights on or off. All lights on. Can turn off right or left light. And then I've got a screen brightness that I can adjust on here too. Um, so that all comes up with a short tap on the home button. Now if, and that'll go away, you know, I don't know how many seconds it is, but a certain number of seconds that'll go away for you. So now I'm gonna long press on the home button. Okay, so that's going to give me three options. I've got magnifier on the left and the center is open. Open memory. And that that opens up the memory card. Um, where if I had an SD card in here, that'd be an option I could press on. Otherwise, I'm now in the internal memory. And then if I want to see pictures, Picture. I can select that. And I don't have any made, so I'll uh, I'll show you how that how that works in a second. We'll take some pictures and come back here. Um, so then also we have settings. Setting. That's our option last page. our last option on the right allows us to change the tilt compensation. Things like, you know, the camera gets changed the angle when I move the screen. Well, it'll adjust and straighten things um, unless I don't want to. I turn that off. I can turn on and off the speech guide. I can turn on and off voice labeling if I want to save memory, perhaps. Uh, but I kind of like it. It's pretty cool to save your files with with voice. And I'll show you how that works in a few minutes. The um, power saving you can turn on or off 
and then you can have it vibrate when it comes on and does other things or, or not. Again, save battery or maybe you don't want that. There's three options here in the settings menu. Um, we're in the wrench now. I'm going to press the thing that looks like a, a guy talking. Voice setting page. And that's voice settings where I can set the gender of the of the voice labels or sorry, the voice um, feedback from the device. And then I can also change to a, a, a good variety. Language setting. A good variety of languages. Quite a few languages are, are supported. Cancel. So I'm going to go back. There's a back button or I can also press the home button, which I think will be one step back with a short press or all the way back to live mag if you give it a long press. So that's our menu. Two um, things you get into with the home button, the, uh, the little lights menu, and then also you can get into the main menu. So I'm going to long press it. Magnifier. And that's new view. essentially the same as just touching magnifier on there. It brings me back to my, my live mag. So going around, we've got the contrast wheel. I already went over that. Changes contrasts, allows you to change the settings on there, allows you to switch between color and and uh, your favorite contrast color. I've gone over the the joystick that allows us to pan, as well as our our pinch and zoom, our touchscreen features, which we can use, of course. We've shown the zoom wheel, so we don't need to do that again. And then the last button, it's kind of an extra, I think it's space they use in the Clover Pro for, for other things, or Clover Book Pro for other things. Uh, it's an enter button. So if I'm in here, I want to, um, all lights choosing off. something, I can all also, lights on. I can also affect that with all lights off the enter button. All lights on. So it has, has some limited functions. You can also short tap the home button if you want to get that menu that comes up, the little light menu to come to get that to go away a little faster. So the far corner, let's, let's show how we can save images. So do we have a recipe or let's just, let's say this is a recipe or something useful that we wanted to save. So I'm going to short, freeze image. give it a quick tap. And that's going to freeze it if I just need to keep it up there, but I don't actually want to save it. Now, if I want to save it, I long press that button. Image saved. And I can do that the first time around or after I've already frozen it. And then I want to make a voice label for this. Okay. Now I can make a voice label. I'm going to make a better one actually. So it's Freeze not, so, image. Whoa. Maybe I'm not. So I've got one on there. Here, let's do that again. Here we go. Long press it. Image saved. Okay. This is my image, Yahoo. All right, so I can play that. This is my image, Yahoo. Get that up to the mic. Play Please that again. Image. Oh, come on, let me play it again. All right, well, I'll play it when we get in the voice menu. So to get back to the picture gallery, I'm gonna long press this, uh, the home button and go to open. Open, memory. And that's where it allows me to open up all my stuff. I can just picture. press picture and then everything that I've saved shows up here. And if I put a voice label on it, there'll be a visual indicator of that. Um, it looks sort of like audio stuff. So, this is my image, so when I press those, I want to make a voice label for this. so you, uh, those are really stupid ones, but you know, it <laughs> can be like, okay, this is my recipe for, for cookies or whatever. So, and you can trash things in here. I don't want those things. I'm going to get Image rid of them. delete, check. Delete. See ya. All right. So what I did, there's a garbage can in here. I've got the picture selected that I want to get rid of. I want to... Image delete, check. I tap on the garbage can. It gives me a red garbage can right in the center of the uh, image that I've, I'm erasing. So I'll just... Deleted. Tap that and boom. All right. We're cleaned up. So no more pictures in there. And then, you know, if I don't want to go all the way back, 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 there is a, a back thing on here. I can do it step by step with short taps on the home button, or I can just hold it down and that'll, whoops, sorry, I got to actually long press it. And then that brings me back Magnifier, to, new view. brings me back to the live magnification. Okay, so I promised I'd get back to this um, the distance camera and, and kind of talk to you about writing and doing hobbies with the Cloverbook Plus. So first of all, let me kind of start with the basics. So first of all, if you're going to write under a device, you're going to deal with two things. One is you're magnified, so it just seems a little bit stranger. Your movements are a little bit different. That you can't really change. Um, 
thing that gets me is writing on the ones where the screen's way up there and you're trying to write down here and your eyes that go there and here and it makes it really difficult. Whereas this one you have the camera right underneath the screen. You can just look straight through and then at least you're just dealing with the magnified writing when you're writing. Let's say we want to write over here and it's more convenient maybe to do that. Uh, you know, I can get more space by lifting up the screen, but let's say I just want to have more space out here. So I take my distance camera and I'll point it down here at the desk and switch that distance I'll view. Press the switch camera button. And now it's upside down and not perfect, but all I do is I press the home button, short press, and then I get a new Click option view. on there when I'm in um, distance mode. And now I can ride off to the side and use this. Gives me a lot more space out there. Maybe I need more space for what a particular thing I'm doing. Um, so a lot of cool ways that you can write under this, uh, this Culver Book Plus and give yourself lots of space, give yourself a direct angle, whatever works out best for you. Well, let's say that you want to use this to play a board game or cards or something. This particular design is really advantageous for that. So here, I'm just gonna sort of replicate. All right, so I have things in my hand. They're going to focus wherever I put them. It'll autofocus on that unless I put the autofocus lock off. So I've got good access to what I want there. And then I need to just drop the card throw it out there. And I've got some cards out there on the table. So well, let's put this little distance camera out there. Turn it around, point it. I can feel the indentation so I know where it's gonna point. Kind of get the general direction. I'll press the camera Thank switch you. button. Press that camera switch button and it'll switch straight to that. <clears throat> Look at those cards. And I can move around here a little bit too. I can see everything that the camera can see. And then I can magnify in. Okay, that's what they got out there on the table. All right, so what do I got? Let me switch, you. switch back to my hand. I've got my stuff there. Obviously, I don't know how to play cards for the mess of cards I'm making here, but it gives you a great idea of, you know, you've got your game pieces or your cards here at hand. You can magnify them, see what you've got. You've got a quick you. one button switch. And now I'm looking at the table. I can look around. I want to see somebody's face better or something. I can even flip it up and look out there, look across the room. Uh, we've got quite a bit of distance on this, but really neat aspect to this is, you know, I'm, I'm in my, my apartment. I want to read and stuff. Maybe I want to go down the hall and play some games. Well, I can just fold this guy up, go take him, and I've got a full gaming system. I don't need to adapt the game itself because this, this guy will do it for me. Really cool feature with the Cloverbook Plus. All right, we're all done with our Cloverbook Plus here. So let's pack it up and send it on its way. Just have to long press that uh, power button. And that'll give us two options, sleep and power down. We'll choose power down. Makes a happy little power down sound. I'll flip the distance camera in there. Fold the screen down, fold that up. Got my handy dandy case right here. Put that in there. Put that guy out of the way. Fold the zip up my case have to know how to use a zipper. There we go. Even with my floundering, didn't take long. Packed it up, ready to go. Let's go have some more fun somewhere else. Thanks for watching. If we can get you more information about the Cloverbook Plus or connect you to a local dealer in your area, please reach out. You can call us at 888-308-0059. You can email us at sales at irie-at.com or find us online at ir ie-at.com. Have a great day and be iry.